So I'm Babu Walinga Obi. I'm the founder of Mumsy's business, which is actually transitioning into the next billion. When I first heard of the theme for this um, session of Crowdsourcing Week, which is how does um, the crowd economy empower billions, I was very, very excited. Uh, for one, because at that time I was rethinking and toying with the idea of changing the name uh, to the next billion. Um, so that, that would have been perfect. Um, but more importantly, um, because I believe that we found a solution and a way for our new platform to really release the full force and power of what the crowd economy is all about and how to leverage that to enable and really um, improve the lives of billions. Which leads me to really our next question, which is, what if I told you that the next billion dollar market opportunity is in China or India, but women. I'd like to share with you next a short video that I found um, last year that really inspired me and sparked an inner conversation. <laughs> Myself, <laughs> I'll let it roll. India and China have a billion plus people each, but equally significant is what Strategy And calls the third billion, the billion women set to enter the global workforce in the next decade. We talk about China and we talk about India as the one billion opportunity. Well, there is another one billion opportunity today um, that sits in front of all of us and it has to do with all those women who are disengaged from mainstream society and economy. And, and we have to find a way to uh, engage them. Even small increases in empowering women can lead to dramatic economic and social benefits. Government and business leaders need to start paying attention because they are missing a powerful engine for social and economic growth. To look at what needs to happen and understand the impact of empowering more women workers, Strategy End created the Third Billion Index, ranking 128 countries. The countries are clustered in five groups, from those on the path to success to others just at the starting gate. This data provides real insights into what works, and it proves that the impact of empowering women is exponential to the investment it takes. Empowering women creates a powerful ripple effect that improves GDP, literacy, education, and even lowers infant mortality. The bottom line, if governments and companies make the right decisions and investments, it will change the world, one woman at a time. That's the idea in 90 seconds. As you can see, um, when I watched this uh, video, um, what sparked the name change, obviously, but also really what it actually serves to demonstrate is how we're still failing to capitalize on what I call our most precious and undervalued human resource, which are women. And by actually working all together to unleash that poten potential and invest in women, we can actually achieve the changes we want to see in the world. That's why we focus on mission and we say on unleashing and investing in women's economic potential through entrepreneurship as a catalyst for positive impact uh, to local, national, and global economies, and also to people and planet. Um, <clears throat> and to achieve this, really, we've addressed we found a solution to address um, the key challenges that women face um, in business in starting up and to, in growing their businesses, which is one, access to finance. Um, two, access to skills, training, business development skills. Three, access to inspirational, a network of inspirational role models. And that one is very important because women fail to see um, the grandeur of how many other women are starting up in business. Since 2010, there were approximately 198 million women that started up in business. Um, and when I speak to female entrepreneurs, and I mentor some female entrepreneurs, what I tend to get, the feeling I tend to get all the time is that they are all alone. And one of the ways we want to do and showcase uh, women on our platform is giving them literally a platform to be visible. And one other of our key, um, I'd say, uh, milestones in our platform is also providing women with access to markets. And I will dwell a little bit further on that, onto that later on and explain how we're going to achieve that. So, which brings me really to our vision, 
which is a very bold vision, um, but one which I believe wholeheartedly that it's not impossible to achieve with the help of the crowd economy. And that is really to become a global funding home for female entrepreneurs and their, and their businesses. Um, but also, also um, a one-stop shop, a marketplace where they can access opportunities. Access opportunities in the form of people who are already engaged and want to empower and invest in women. And we have to start somewhere, so we're starting in Europe. I actually started the company uh, based out of Oslo um, last year. And we, for the last eight months, have been in beta. And that was always the strategy. I wanted us to be able to validate many of the assumptions we had about female entrepreneurs. And what transpired was a whole host of insights that we didn't expect. Um, and one of the most insightful things I think I personally learned from this whole experience um, was that the number one barrier stopping women in starting up is women themselves. Women just don't show up. Um, and I think one of the things that we are trying to address on the platform is to say that you need to show up. You need to invest in yourself and invest in your idea. At least lose faith, faith in front of people. Because if you don't show a sense of commitment in your own business, why would anybody want to invest in you? And really the greatest potential of our new platform, I believe, um, rests in the developing emerging economies of this world, where women actually have been, um, I'd say, are still underfunded and undercapitalized. But where microfinancing has done a great job at uh, allowing women to start micro-businesses or uh, have proofs of concept. But I believe that what microfinancing cannot do is give these businesses scalability. And this is why I think that crowdfunding, and why I'm so passionate about crowdfunding, is because it's the next evolution uh, from microfinancing for women all over the world. Um, and when you think about the fact that women, we pay 99.9% .9 of every loan that we, that's had been given for, um, to them by microfinancing, that should support the idea that when we invest in women, we're making a smart investment choice, if anything else. Yeah. So... We kind of had to go back to the table after our beta and really rethink how are we going to create a platform that kind of has the potential of unlocking women's economic potential. Um, and we had to rethink and challenge our own assumptions about crowdfunding and really think about what is it about women that we can, through crowdfunding, address and elevate. Um, and so, really, we are creating a platform where we are um, leveraging the full force, as I said before, of the crowding economy by merging three concepts, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and crowd speaking. And also, what we're doing is that we're redefining ourselves, sorry, we're redefining ourselves as an impact, the world's first impact crowdfunding platform. And I'll explain why that is. Um, one of the things that I think is most powerful about impact investing and venture uh, philanthropy is the idea that money just gets you so far. And actually, capacity building um, and enabling women, teaching them skills, um, has the power to accelerate the growth of companies in a much more longer term. And that's why we're creating a platform really uh, inspired by those principles, but also putting the onus on value creation, women's economic empowerment, um, and also um, financial autonomy as a focus, and also focusing really our primary, um, the primary focus on investment on the actual platform on women but also women-led businesses. So what we hope to do really is to help women raise the necessary funds needed, not only to start, but to grow, to scale, grow, and lead 
sustainable and economic, um, and economic as, as successful businesses. And we, I love this quote, I wrote this. It took me actually uh, quite a while to sum up what the value proposition of our platform would be because we're addressing so many different types of audiences. So we're addressing female entrepreneurs, we're addressing the backers, the potential backers. And it always came back to the idea that women, first and foremost, need to know their worth. We need to understand the value of our own contribution before we're able to share that with others, before others are able to appreciate that value. So I wrote this, and I'll just read it out um, to you, if you don't mind, which is, we aim to provide female entrepreneurs with a platform, a place where they, do, they not only feel, but know that they are valued, supported, connected, validated, seen and heard. A place where they can raise funds, raise their profile, raise their potential, um, and, uh, their potential and raise the capa their capacity as entrepreneurs, and ultimately raise the standard of living for millions of people. A place they can grow, a place they can call home. So we're scaling up. And as I mentioned before, I founded this business with um, focusing on what we call mompreneurs. Um, and the reason behind that was really because I wanted to help the majority of women driving female, the rise of female entrepreneurship. And worldwide, those are mothers. But along the journey, and as this uh, video that I showed you pointed out, it says there's a greater need to actually scale that offering up to all female-led enterprises. And I say led enterprises and not just female entrepreneurs because there's a clear distinction in that. One thing we do know is that businesses with more uh, women in them, especially in management position, executive positions, fail less. So diversity is important. So by focusing not only on female entre entrepreneurs, but female-led enterprises, what we're saying is that we want to see more women lead their companies, but that does not exclude men from joining the team. So we're also focusing on women who are starting up, but women who already run small, medium-sized businesses, and even micro-businesses that are finding it hard to scale up to become small, medium-sized businesses. Um, and a small percentage of that, I think, as well on our platform will be fast growth businesses. Um, I say a small percentage because ultimately, the bulk of our economies, uh, the foundation of our economies, is based on small, medium-sized businesses. But crowdfunding, what it's done, and what I fundamentally disagree with, it's highlighted sometimes um, the type of businesses that are sexy. And by sexy, I mean the high tech. Um, we, are, have a, we, by our app, are able to lower, I don't know, um, malaria. And I back and support those type of initiatives. But I fundamentally feel as well that we should value the same the type of businesses the type uh, opened by women that, who want to open a coffee shop or a nursery in a community that doesn't have a nursery. Because ultimately, that creates value for the parents who have to take a car every day for 40 minutes each way and drop their kids at school. Because the focus should really be on value creation. So one thing that's very innovative, we believe, about our new platform is that we're pioneering a new approach to reward-based crowdfunding, focusing on fund management. And by that, what we mean, we're allowing everybody, and by everybody, I mean companies, organizations, individuals, high net worth individuals, the opportunity to open a fund, a personal fund on our platform, and pipeline, administer however much they want, for this was $1 to invest in women-type businesses that they choose. So they can define, for example, the industries they're interested in, but also the geographic location of these companies, all the way down to your, their neighborhood. Again, to highlight really the, it, the locality of where women, in, women's impact start, which is at family level, local community level, then national, and potentially global. We're also rethinking how to engage people on our platform. 
And what we are actually introducing is a multi-level contribution approach. And this idea came to us last year um, because many of the women that we found and also many of the backers that came onto our um, beta website um, didn't always choose rewards um, connected to, um, well, didn't always pledge uh, uh, for in the, with the intention of getting a reward. So they often uh, chose the custom pledge, which ultimately doesn't give you a reward. So I started asking people, why are you pledging? Uh, for, why are you pledging and not wanting this reward? And the answer often was, I just believe in their idea. I just believe that these women can achieve what they say they want to achieve, and I want to support that. And this is really the seed that gave us the idea of having a multi-contribution level, because ultimately contribution doesn't come in just one form. It comes in multiple forms. And what we're trying to emphasize on our new platform is that in each one of these contribution levels, ways is valued the same. So you can become a funder, invest your money on our platform by opening a fund. You can be a developer, again, open to individuals, but also companies through their employees, um, and donate your time, your knowledge, and your skills in, in really building the capacity of women in their businesses. So for example, I can be on my own platform and say, I want to uh, contribute five hours of my time uh, and my knowledge and expertise is marketing. Or they could be an amplifier. And again, this was an insight that we got last year, uh, whilst we're in beta, where it was actually an astonishing insight, where I'd say that the majority of the women we've had on our platform, uh, we, also, we also, sorry, I have to mention that we curated only six projects last year. Uh, we had more, but we decided to really just focus on six to validate. And so we chose women that we felt were really capable when they showed us through their, what they had achieved with their business. So I would qualify them as A-type personalities, very driven. Um, but when it came to actually asking for money from friends and family, this thing happened, um, which really was surprising to me, which was they shrunk. They had a very hard time asking their friends and family for money, but they could waltz in um, into a meeting and convince the head of the larger supermarket uh, group in Norway to stock their products. And that, again, got us thinking about what is it about friends and family that can be leveraged beyond money? What is their true worth? And what we found was actually is the, a social net worth, what we call their social net worth, social currency. And so on our platform, friends and family, journalists, bloggers, anybody who can pay it forward with a tweet, with a post, with an article, can become an amplifier and promote the type of businesses that we see on our platform. And lastly, but not least, and I'd say the most important, I guess, is that entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs themselves, are part of the contributor, are the contributors on our platform. And that's really important because, as I said before, women need to show up invest in themselves and invest in ideas before anybody can. So actually what is fundamentally different from what we're trying to achieve is we're creating a platform where women can list their profiles as entrepreneurs but also their companies, where they don't just come to be funded, but they actually have visibility so that when they decide to raise a funding round, they can. And also what transpired is that if people are able to open funds and put money on our platform, ultimately what we're creating is the largest crowdsourced, crowdfunded, crowdsourced and crowdfunded fund for women out there. And also what that means is for, that for the first time, what we hope will happen is that women entrepreneurs will know that there's just one source, one place where they can get access to all this funding that the money and the backers who believe in female entrepreneurship, who believe in women's economic empowerment, are already engaged, are already on our platform. So what we're taking away is this idea that crowdfunding, crowdfunding is embedded on, that it's through your social network that you access these funds. By having people with 
funds available already on the platform means that you know for sure that you're coming to a place where you can be funded, that you can be supported. So in essence, we're creating the largest ecosystem available to women entrepreneurs. We're also equalizing the balance of power in crowdfunding. And this actually was a revelation whilst we were crafting the new concept, um, which so it happened to be that the large majority of crowdfunding platforms um, as they work today, the power balance is only from the backer's side. They have the ability to search, find, and fund you. The cases don't. And as I said, I meet a lot of female entrepreneurs, and one thing that always comes back to me um, in different forms is that we don't have a choice, we don't have control, um, I don't have access. And what really that comes down to is the fact that women do not feel that they can choose and they don't feel empowered. So through this really simple functionality, what we're saying is that we're giving women the ability to also search and find investors that suit their business values and their missions. And the reason behind that as well is that today's entrepreneur doesn't just start for-profit businesses. And even those that start for-profit business businesses have a hybrid model with a purpose behind it, very much like this business is. So in a way, what we are creating and being able to do is say, if you are a social enterprise or, uh, or an impact-led business, for example, you might not want to have funding by a bank. You might not want to have funding by certain types of people. So you can choose to do that and invite them to actually fund you. So we're giving the power back to women. And also, as I mentioned before, what we're also doing, we're just opening participation to all. Because what we truly believe is that we cannot be a platform that, where women just invest in women because that serves to only confine women in this world of victimization, which I truly do not believe in. I think we need to engage everybody, public sector, foundations, organizations, companies, individuals, who are actually already doing a lot of work around investing in women, but that a lot of women don't know of. So as I said, we're bringing all of these parties together in one place, in a meeting place. We're also adopting a hybrid approach to our investment and also in finance, uh, finance opportunities on the platform. So we are starting with rewards-based crowdfunding. We're also rethinking the way equity later on might look like for women. Because we know at the moment that uh, reward-based, uh, so um, equity-based crowdfunding is largely dominated by men. And we have an assumption behind that that we want to actually test out. Um, but I'm not quite ready to share that with you just yet. And we're also able to do multiple funding rounds. And what is really interesting about that is that I was reading a fact about Kickstarter that said that the majority of people only came and pledged once. Um, as our mission states, we want to not only start, but help women grow their businesses. So it makes no sense for us to be a place where they just come once to get funded. We want to grow with them. So by allowing to ha them to have multiple funding rounds, what we're saying is that you can come in at pre-revenue level, raise money, then grow, and then ask for seed funding, raise money, and then grow, and then series A, series B, and ultimately, my wildest dream, what we would like to achieve is have an exit of some form on our platform. So this quote is one of my favorite quotes because it really sums up everything about what we are trying to do and why it is important that we invest in women's economic potential. Um, because if women aren't asking, receiving money, half the population isn't contributing all they can to economic growth and prosperity. That's just the fact.
And going back to what I mentioned before, we are a for-profit business, but with a purpose. And our purpose is value creation. Because as I said, value creation means that every type of business started by women matters because it creates jobs, even if it's one individual. It empowers women to invest that money into their families and local communities. And it empowers women in the way that it brings them to the table, includes them financially, and gives them financial autonomy. And that is something that we're truly, truly, truly passionate about. So it's about inviting women to participate, enabling them to realize their economic and entrepreneurial potential, uh, to achieve that financial autonomy. And it's also about providing them with the necessary tools, people, and training, and opportunities that will help them build thriving businesses. Um, but one of the most important steps we have to do, first and foremost, is about engaging people as to why it is important. And by that, I mean that we really need to focus on the winning facts, and not the fact that we constantly hear about that women only own 1% of the world's uh, property, women still just. It's about really owning and sharing and finding and reflecting on the facts that actually will enable women to step up and show up and ask. And I would like to share a few of these facts with you. Um, one of them being, what if I told you that women-owned businesses start up with 70 to 80% less capital, grow slowly, but fail less? What if I told you that women-led companies achieve a 35% higher return on investment and are 12% more profitable? What if I told you that women control more than 20 trillion, around 70% of the global consumer spending power? What if I told you that women reinvest 9% of their income back into their families and local communities in the form of better education, better health, better nutritional choices? And what if I told you by investing in just one woman, the entrepreneurial potential, you have the power to elevate four women out of poverty? And one of my favorites, what if I told you that the number of women-owned businesses in the US alone accounts for 1.3 million SMEs, generating 1.3 trillion in GDP and employing 7.7 .7 million people? But what's most, what's most important and surprising about this fact is it totals the combined market cap of Apple, Microsoft, General Electric, Sony, and 40% more employees than the country's three largest employers, which are McDonald's, IBM, Walmart combined. So I really would like you to invite you, really, to join us, join our campaign. We started this a couple of weeks ago, and this was actually yesterday taken out here. Right. We were trying to engage people around these winning facts. So we invite you to take these pictures, find your own facts, come to our Facebook page, find the facts that we've posted, share it with your communities and friends, because until we actually start thinking and reflecting on the fact that investing in women not only makes for smart economics and business sense, that it's a win-win for all, we can't achieve the changes that we want to see in the world. And one of my favorite African quotes says, if you want to go fast, go it alone. But if you want to go far, go it together. And we truly want to go further. Thank you very much.